congratulations on your film, The Snowman. Thank you. Can you just tell me a little bit about the evolution of this project? Because I understand Martin Scorsese, who is credited as a producer on the film, was originally slated to direct it, but you ended up taking it over. Can you just tell us a little bit about what happened? Well, I'm not 100% informed, but uh, I know that uh, Marty was hired to do the film, but the project he's been working on for 20 years, which, uh, which became the film Silence, came in between and the, and the producers wanted to 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 move on and they asked me uh, and this was about three and a half years ago and that, that's how it happened for me and here we are did they just ask you or did you have to pitch for the film no there, there was no pitch the, uh, I, I was asked to do it yeah. why do you think they asked you well I think uh, one very important uh, Thing here in the in the mix was that it, it's uh, set in Scandinavia, where I'm from. So th there's when I read the book, it, it felt like uh, oh, I know I know about these things uh, and uh, the, the the landscape and the snow and the way people are talking to each other and the the atmosphere, uh, which ha has a very important part in in the film. Uh, sets aside, it's a very well-constructed and in interesting story and, and also not just a uh, who done it, but also a, a why did it. Because I wanted to ask you, in all seriousness, what it is about snow. You directed Let the Right One In, which was almost like a gothic take on snow, and in this, snow is a very powerful element. Everybody remembers the movie Fargo and the use of snow in that film. There was also an American film called Wind River, which used snow very effectively. Thomas, what is it about snow that lends so much foreboding atmosphere in a film? I don't know what it is, but it, it really affects people a lot. And... and uh... I said when when we started on this project, I, I didn't want to do a, any scenes uh, with fake snow. It it needed to be real snow. And you see, it's it's many things. It's uh, the atmosphere it creates. It's how how it reflects light. How how it affects people. You know how the muscles stiffen and. Uh, uh, the eyes get a bit red and, and wet and uh, the fingers get pale, uh, sometimes pale, sometimes red. You know, e everything reacts to it. Sound becomes very, um, what's the word for this, uh, muffled. And uh, the evenings get bright. It's it's a lot of things that comes with snow and, and snow has many different qualities other than just uh, being uh, this this white big big thing in the landscape it it has a, a lot of different textures and uh, it's it's really interesting and also what it does it sort of make it conservates it it's uh, it it makes uh, reality freeze or stop too and everything that's hidden under it it's it's a very uh, interesting thing. You also mentioned though the part of the world that you're from and where these this novel is set and where Joe Nesbo's novels are all set Scandinavia. Now interesting that when they made the American versions of uh, the American version of Girl with the Dragon Tattoo they recast it but they didn't change the setting which they could easily have done setting it in America. Is there something peculiar about your corner of the world? Uh, maybe. Uh, it's, it's peculiar. It also seemed to be something a bit unknown to people. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't be a very uh, uh, weird or unusual thing to set a film in Australia, but for some reason it feels... Uh, 
soldier to 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 be in Scandinavia. And I I don't know why that would be, but maybe it's because it, it hasn't been exposed that much on on film and television other other than maybe uh, Ingmar Bergman films, but uh, in film history. But I would I would have thought maybe it, it has a particular kind of atmosphere and it allows particularly scary scary films as a, as a good backdrop for it. I find it very interesting that with Let the Right One In and with Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy and with this movie, you seem to be very interested in getting the viewer to be almost thinking about what the characters are thinking and doing. Do you deliberately seek out this conversation that you want your films to have with the audience? Well, I think to try to uh, look at to to look at the audience as someone who is participating in the narration is a good thing because you activate the viewers. Today there is so many films that uh, you know just spoon feeding the audience and and making the the audience passive by uh, by excluding every kind of mystery or every kind of insecure uh, piece of information. So I I think it's it's really great to to see a film where you're invited to and uh, and also to be considered as a grown up person and and to have your own opinion and view on what's going on. And, uh, and that's what draws you into a story, I think, when you're invited. So, so yes, I, I really do think it's important to, uh, to leave one door open. And God bless you for holding, for holding shots, for reveling in stillness and in silence. Michael Fassbender puts in a terrific performance in this film. And I think some of the best moments are where he's basically not doing anything. You're just holding him in frame. Quite a brave thing for a director to do these days. You obviously love those pauses between the action. Well, thank you. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, uh, it's like when, when you're eating, you have to uh, not just put the food into the mouth. You have to... To taste it and chew it and also swallow it before you take the, na the next chunk. So um, uh, thank you for saying that. I'm, uh, and and you also have to understand that fil film on uh, shown in a proper cinema is something totally different from watching it on on your iPhone or your iPad or something much smaller. And and especially when when we're getting to these fantastic. Uh, sceneries and, and uh, settings we've found, it's nice to, to allow the, the eye to travel a bit around, also allowing the, the audience to, to get a moment to, to explore it themselves and not just being, uh, you know, uh, forced to see different things. This next question is a standard question that I like to ask directors of genre films and crime films, because I think it's a very interesting and I think sometimes important topic. And this is the issue of the mediation of cinema and how things that we see in real life that we find shocking and horrible, once mediated through cinema, it becomes entertainment, it becomes more palatable. For instance, as timing would have it, we have the horrific events in Las Vegas, which of course we're all deeply shocked about. If that had been a film, people would still have been shocked, but they would have seen it in a different way. With this film, if there was an actual news event of a killer like this, we would be processing it in a very different way than when we do when we watch it through cinema. Whether it's fictionalized or based on fact, there is an effect that cinema has that seems to let our guard down and allow this, these stories, these narratives into a much deeper place. 
what is it about that? And how do you make the distinction between the way we process real life events like Las Vegas as opposed to how we process them when we see them on film? to ask you about let the right one in if anyone interested in that genre of horror or vampire films was to list the the top three films of the genre that film now gets mentioned it's become a classic it's extraordinary what do you think accounts for the power that this movie has acquired there was a very good american remake no question about that still doesn't have a patch on the movie that you made. What happened there? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it wasn't meant to be a genre movie. It was meant to be a, a, a love story. And I, th I still think it's a love story. It's not a, it's not a, a horror film. It, it happens to look like one, but it's actually a, a love story. And I think that it's a, it appeals to people uh, this story about this young, yeah, these two kids, it takes a sort of uh, a, a shortcut into your heart by being, uh, it, it, it's looking like a genre film, 
but it's actually 